Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Today we're going to take you along with us for a day of March garden chores. Well, welcome to the northeast corner of our garden here in upstate New York in zone 5B slash 6A. This is kind of what we like to call our wildlife corner. It's the area of the garden that takes us back into the woods. That's kind of a protected wetland back there. And uh, that's kind of where all the deer and the turkey and the fox and the coyote and everybody lives. So we tried to make this a nice natural border with some winterberry and bee balm, uh, queen of the prairie. There's a lot of good stuff in here. So let's kind of tell you what's in here and then what we're going to do. We'll start on the outside edge here. This is a small hedge of Invincible Mini Malvettes. There's one, two, three, four, five of them, and then one Invincible Garnetta. These are Annabelle type hydrangeas that bloom on new wood. We've already cut them back. Behind them right here are hardy hibiscus. Ooh, it just rained, so it's very moist soil. It just sunk a little bit. These are a perennial for us, and they will get cut back. Actually, we're gonna cut them back today pretty hard. There's three varieties. There's Berry Awesome, there's Candy Crush, and there's one more I always forget. Evening Rose. Evening Rose, and they look spectacular in August for us. Evergreen interest right here with a Winter Gem Boxwood. Here's a flowering almond bush that we coppiced last year. So this is a growth it put on in one year. It did really nicely. Yeah, it's going to have beautiful pink blooms. We planted it here solely because this bald cypress tree, which we limbed up really high, it's looking like a lollipop right now, was getting um, rubbed against by deer. What do they call that? Yeah, the when they rub rutting? their antlers on it in I don't the know. rutting season. I don't, know. I don't know. But we put it there to kind of protect it, and it seems to have worked. This right here is a sweet shrub, right? Henry's it, it, Garnet? It is a Henry's Garnet sweet shrub. Yeah. I love that for fall color. Winter berry, which has had all of the berries eaten off of it. This was our attempt at keeping deer out by putting Irish spring soap in the bag. Yeah, but somehow some of the bags got eaten and I, the soap it, disappeared. Yeah, it's like they ate the Irish spring soap. I don't think we need this anymore. No, that, that, that can go. <laughs> <laughs> it's also kind of disintegrating, so we'll get rid of that. Um... This all right here is bee balm, which it's I a, love. A There's... mix of a native that Eric's mom got from a native plant nursery that's mm -hmm. somewhere near us. We should visit that sometime yeah, this year. Yeah, there's white, pink, and purple in this mix, and it's a really nice combo. Christopher's pride and joy is right here. This is... Wait, um... well, wait, look, before we tell him what it is, look. It's like something came along and ate the soap. I don't understand. I don't get it. What would have eaten the soap? This is a Bosnian <laughs> pine that we bought many years ago. I bought like five years ago. And it was actually a toilet brush. And it was $2 at a big box store. It's lived in several homes. It's been here. This will be its third year in this spot. So I think it's going to do it. It's finally going to become not a large toilet brush. It's going to be a beautiful tree. <laughs> We have very high hopes. This right here is... Um, Manusta. Oh, this is the Queen of the Prairie. Yes. Which is gorgeous and goes beautifully with the bee bomb. So that's going to get cut to the ground. And also might be one of the reasons that my little Bosnian pine doesn't do well because Queen of the Prairie can be five to six feet tall. It's gorgeous and it looms over. This area here, we kind of just let the seeds fall and do what they want. And we won't necessarily rake too much of this out. We'll rake some of it out. Um, but there is, I just see some creeping Charlie in here we got to take care of. Um, but we'll put compost, fresh compost over that. Right here, wow, it's real wet back here. That's why we have the hibiscus and stuff back here and the bee bomb. Um, right here is uh, milkweed. Yep. This is Cinderella milkweed. This right here is Jim Dandy. No, it's not. It's Yes, it yes, is it Jim is. Dandy. To pollinate the winterberry over there. Good job. This is a Dwarf King uh, birch tree, which, which planted. ultimately will probably take over most of this space. It is a birch tree, and it's going to be very happy here. Yes. Pinky Winky Hydrangea, which normally they don't like very wet areas, so we wouldn't recommend it, but this one seems to be working here for us. We do have a beautiful stand of Baptisia here that really fills up the entire space when the season is in full swing. 
uh, Litchfield Angel Rose. Crown Princess Margareta is getting this new trellis. That's why it's laying here on the ground. <laughs> when we were trying to put this uh, new trellis on it in the winter months, it was just too frozen. All of this right here is phlox. This is a backlight white phlox. Yep, luminary backlight. Which the groundhog loves to eat. And then there's some uh, serendipity allium right here. And over here, look, there's definitely a critter right in there. Whoa. I mean, look at that hole. I don't know why they'd want to live in all of this wet muck. So this right here is our square Essex trellis, which had fallen over. We were going to switch this out onto Crown Princess Margarita right here. There's a grass here, which I think is kind of where the critters are living. Maybe? Yeah, I'm assuming that grass, well, it didn't do well last year at all. So I do think we'll dig that out and just let some of these self-seeders take over. All right. Or we can just leave it there to die. That's true. You know, save us the work. The soil. These are um, Jack Monty birches. Yep. This is actually going to be a full size, gorgeous birch tree right here to also help take up some of the moisture. Underneath are these two little tags. This was a wild bergamot that was sent out to us to test out. And I think it's going to look really pretty as it fills in up against the fence. And that last thing in this area we're going to take care of today is a lemony lace elderberry. And these bloom on old wood, but I kind of want to reshape it a little bit. What do you think? Or do you think Honestly, I, should leave it? I feel like we should. I almost think we should take after it the way that we would take after a uh, hydrangea. Just bring it down and kind of shape it so that it does its yeah. thing. I mean, it's already starting to butt out, but I was thinking of taking it about right here. Yeah, this obviously grew really fast. This lemony lace elderberry has had such a journey. Tell it, us that journey, Christopher. It started out over in the new garden bed oh, when we were right. first uh, planting over there and thought, hey, this should do really well in absolute full sun in the heat of the summer. And it didn't. But it lived and we just we put it back here for about a season. It did not look that great. And then the second season was last year and it clearly flourished. Yeah, it really liked it. So you can see he's cutting just above where it's branching out. And we're doing this for foliage. We don't grow this for flowers. I'm very excited to see this uh, oh, as it continues the there. to grow. There's kind of a little dead looking branch there. There? Yeah, that one. That actually might have been uh, I think that was a um, different plant. That's okay. I think that was Agastache. That's great. The first yeah. piece of garden chores done. Yes. So what Eric was just walking past was all of the crazy fortune and blue boa agastache that has already been cut back, but we'll uh, we'll rake that out a little bit. Oh my God, we missed a hydrangea. What? <laughs> we'll do a quick hydrangea like ketchup right now. <laughs> quick hydrangea ketchup. This is <laughs> this uh, is firelight tidbit. Yeah. It's a uh, panicle hydrangea, which means its blooms are shaped like a cone and it blooms on new wood. So you can see that we're just going to count up three buds and count back. So the buds are these swollen little... Little nodes. Yeah, they're very small on the firelight tidbit. This one got transplanted. So, yeah, this hadn't done too, too well. This also, um, before it got transplanted, when the fence was getting installed, someone completely stepped on it yeah. and broke it off at its crown. Could you pull some of those leaves away so we can see it a little clearer? Wow, this was very much buried in mulch over the, the years. It won't mind, though. It'll be okay. Yeah, that looks good. Thinking about the, the critter nest uh, back there, what can we do for that critter nest? Do you have thoughts, Christopher? Um, I think we could hire an outdoor cat. Our cats don't go outside. Yep, you can see he's counting one, two, three, snip. One, two, three, snip. Visually counting. 
I saw a really funny comment on our Annabelle pruning video that this was very ASMR. Yes, this... We do have a really nice panicle pruning video, but we also have an Annabelle type pruning video. All done. One next, or right up close to you. Oh yeah. There you go. I did that last <laughs> video too. There it is. All right. And I like here behind done. him, Autumn Joy Sedum, and some more Serendipity Allium. What are we thinking about for the Sting Arbor Vitae? Well, that's being replaced. We got we ordered a new one. Remember? Oh yes, you're right. Because that one we transplanted, and then we forgot to take care of it by watering it the rest of the season. <laughs> and then over the winter, it was discovered by deer. So I kind of want to leave it there for now, because if the deer are eating it, they'll keep eating that one and leave the other stuff alone. Good idea. Um, and actually, look at all of these divisions of the Magic Show Pink Potion Salvia. Yep. That's all those right there. All coming Pink together. Green. All right, so let us uh, get set up, and then we'll it. start pruning. As you're making your way through the muck, Christopher. Muck, 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 muck. <laughs> muck. This is why you need the waterproof reference. boots. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I want to know who knows the a muck, a muck, a muck reference. What you can see on this very awesome hibiscus is a plant support that did not do a good we job. We didn't put it together correctly, and the hibiscus was too strong for it. Yeah, so I, after I cut this back, I'm going to pull that support out, and then we're going to replace it with a much better support that will be appropriate for this particular plant. The Although reason it we looks use like this... this one didn't need the support this year. I wonder why. It did... No, the year before it kind of laid out more. You're right. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe it doesn't need a support this year as it's now that it's older. That's true. Um, and you can see some of these old pieces down here. This does come back from the ground every year and get this big, which is so cool. So realistically, when it comes to hardy hibiscus, you just prune it all the way down. And they don't start showing up until pretty late, like around Memorial Day for us, we'll start to see it pushing growth. And then after it starts to push growth, once it's awoken, it goes really fast. Yeah. Ooh. But it is um, probably the latest thing in the garden to leaf out. So you, every year you think it's dead. This and butterfly bushes for us. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what we were thinking with that plant support. It's one of those things where in the spring, everything looks small. I mean, the size was right, but just the, the way that this is built, I think it would be much better suited to maybe a cut flower stand. Yeah, maybe, or something like delphiniums or a peony. Yes. There's gotta be something creative people can do with hibiscus branches, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, that did nothing. Yeah, because I just can't see a peony ever being this big. Well, maybe. Oh, I can. But we have other peony supports. Yes. I don't know what we'll use this one for, but Ooh. not for this hibiscus. So be careful in this area. I um, may have surprised you with alliums. I see them. I love an allium. <gasps> so Candy Crush is really cool if you have a space that doesn't have as much room. It's a little bit more vertical. Oh, it says more now. That's cool. Yep. Oh, I believe... The Candy Crush is pink and white, right? Yeah, it's so pretty. It's not my favorite one of the three, but it's my second favorite. Which one's your favorite of the three? Evening Rose. Oh, the one behind you. And what makes that one your favorite? The color combination. It's just like a perfect foliage to flower combo. I wish we were crafty. <laughs> oh, wow. This is a muck. So this one last year we noticed was struggling because the bald cypress hadn't been limbed up. So at the end of the season, we went ahead and limbed up the bald cypress. So we know this will get more sun next year.
Oh, that's a piece that's, of... Yeah, that's Sweet Henry. That's Sweet Henry. Beautiful, Henry's garnet. beautiful color. Henry's garnet, right? Yes, ours okay. is a Henry's garnet. Yes. All right, so right here is the Venusta, the queen of the prairie. I'm just going to cut this down and then we'll rake it out, right? Yeah, just chop it all down. Sometimes I feel like we should just come through with... Uh, hedge clippers? Hedge clippers and just like... But then you would lose the sound, the beautiful sound of these pruners. <laughs> <laughs> I do love these pruners. And if anyone is wondering, I had mentioned when I tried Eric's pruners that they felt a little too big. I got the medium handle size and I love it. I feel like the Bee Bomb is a mixture of that native and then Jacob Klein. And what? Jacob Klein, I believe, is the other name. Good thing these are waterproof pants. <laughs> well, the knee area is waterproof. We'll see yeah. how deep I get in here. Bee Bomb also smells really good. I'm glad we left these up over the winter. Yeah, so, I hope they reseed and spread a ton back here. There's Christopher raking away with his favorite rake. Oh, I smell the bee bomb. Right? It smells really good. I wish I could remember what alliums those were. I remember when I planted them, it was after Eric had gone inside and I couldn't figure out where to put my last group of alliums I had in my hands. Surprise! I love Allie. Now it's a surprise for both of us. <laughs> I mean, we could really leave a lot of this, but... Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it just tidies it up a little. Yeah, it tidies it up for now. It'll, I mean, it would, you know, break down and add nutrients to the soil for sure. So we know the soil is really moist right now, but it obviously can't be so moist that panicle hydrangeas can't bloom in it and no, and that was one of the can't grow in it. We chose a winter berry, we chose a sweet shrub, we chose a bald cypress, and that birch tree. All of them can take slightly wetter areas. Oh, I'm looking at the base of that winter berry and seeing a whole group of uh, bee bomb that I missed. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Ooh, it smells so nice. And I'm noticing a branch I forgot to cut on the Pinky Winky. Here, while you rake, I'm going to walk in there and do that. Look, I missed this branch right here. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I'm going to go over here in this muck. You know, one day this little toilet brush is going to grow up and I'm going to put Christmas lights on it. That will be such a celebratory day. So you might notice there's some black drip back here. Obviously, we're not going to need it. This area does stay a little bit more damp. So I am taking this opportunity to pull up some old, well, that was easy. Some old, old drip. drip that is We not, haven't run that in how long? We have not had, we have not had this stuff back here attached in a long time. Is it just sitting there waiting to be pulled up or do we have to plug something now? No, this has been detached for a long time. I bet you this goes directly underneath the roots of all that other stuff. So I'm not going to go fight with it. But we'll just clean it up for aesthetics. Don't put that in with the debris, though. We'll have to dispose of that. No, that's separately. going in the garbage can. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find. Although any... I bet we can use this little black wire here to tie Crown Princess Margarita together while we try and slide that trellis over her. That's a good idea. Save us a trip to the garage. Wait, let's see. Ugh. Yeah, there's a coupler right there. That's so funny. Awesome. All right, so is the next task to get this trellis on the Chrome Princess? Yes, it is. Um, right. I'd prefer not to prune the roses right now. 
but I'm going to clean it around the base just a little bit. And if there's anything dead that's going to be coming out when I do the pruning, I'm just going to cut that out now so there's less to squish in underneath. So you're going to gonna make it thinner is what you're yes. saying. Yes. All right. Pre-pruning. Just a pre-prune. I wouldn't say Margarita is a particularly thorny rose. And not for us like a super aggressive grower either. No, we've we've learned a lot about roses in these these years. And I would say we've learned a lot about that from our experience with Margareta. Margarita, Margareta. <laughs> I say Margarita because that's how I heard um, one of the David Austin Rose people say it. But it does just make me want a cocktail every time I say it. Yeah. So you're just going to make it more narrow at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to take out some of the stuff that, like, this would have been coming out anyway. Get rid of this here. It's in the front. I'm being a little mindful of branching. Oh, this is, that part was dead anyway. Maybe not all the way. See if that's going to be enough. Do you think that's enough now for me to? We can. I think if we just take this right here and use it as like a a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> that was not quality footage. <laughs> you start towards the base. And then I can come and slide the trellis over if you want. This is actually a lot better than using twine. Ugh. Wait, I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, this I had sort of a little string. This one, trellis. How's it holding? We're good, we're doing good, we're doing good. There's one down there. There's a couple on the far side of you that you probably can't see that well. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, get those in. And there's the ones closest to you now. Okay. Do we like this kind of turned like this to match yes. the other one? Yeah. This one we can't really take apart. But yeah. Let me go grab the uh, mallet. Still more? Little bit, little bit. Let's see if I'm ambidextrous. There we go. It's important to use both hands. Awesome. Let's pop this thing back on. I think that's it. It's not moving, that's for sure. Tumble bag. That looks real good. And we have one more piece that attaches to that, right? Yeah, to make it taller. Okay. Yeah, that looks really good. I like it. Of all the areas in our garden, I think, Eric, you would agree, this is the area that has the biggest transformation from spring. A hundred percent. That's also the area that we tend to the least, except well, we like kinda, this one time a year. Yeah, we planted things here that don't really need tending. Purposely. All right, we've got Autumn Joy Sedum. Which grows beautifully underneath the North Wind's grass. These were nice up over the winter time. Give a little winter interest. But once you get to the wet part of spring, they start to look pretty bad. <laughs> I just went to wipe more dirt off my um, sweater. And in the meantime, oh, wow, you're dirty. Put so much more on me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I see lots and lots of rosettes down here. I'm going to leave a lot of the debris on top to protect it. I'm wondering, Eric, this, the center of this grass is pretty hollow. Yeah. I don't think this year, but next year, I think we're going we'll to divide, divide it. it. Yeah. This grass is big. It's gorgeous. It's a stunner. 
I'm also very happy about the way that the Autumn Joy Sedum repetition has worked on this border. It's such an easy plant to grow. Really no love from us is what it wants. So there's little groups of three Autumn Joy Sedum and then groups of three or more Serendipity Alliums, which does want a little more love. Just in the way of food, right? They like a little yeah. food. It's hard to believe how much this fills in. And it fills in so quickly. These Agasakis over here are going to be so happy. They got divided. They got new homes. And you know there's going to be a ton ton of verbena seedlings over here. That's true. And castor bean. Oh, that's right. We are going to plant the castor bean along the back. I feel like we need to take those little uh, tags off back there along the fence once the season gets going, just because aesthetically I don't care for that look. <laughs> oh, I can take them now. Will you remember what those are? Yeah. I won't. <laughs> this is one of the great things about documenting your garden. We'll know what they were. Oh, I love it. Wow. This is such an interesting thing to be so excited about, to, to look at it this visual. But it It'll is. look so much better. And it's kind of my, it's not my least favorite part of the garden. It's absolutely one of my favorite parts. It's one of my least favorites to take care of. Yeah. Which is why we don't want to do it that often. Yeah. And so it's good to start with it. So yeah. that now it's kind of done with. The only thing left to do will be to put mulch on it. And we use compost as mulch. Yeah. And that'll be next month. Before we switch off, are you ready to release the, the Tromner from its spike or its uh, support? Yeah. So the Tromner we have, I don't know if you can see it, but we put, uh, it was leaning forward for a little bit in its life. So I, I don't think it's leaning it. anymore. Yeah, it's definitely grown up. Shall I? Yes, for sure. We have one of these tree. Oh, what was under that? What was that white? What's that white thing sticking out? Oh, a spider web. It was a, oh, it was like a like an insect, a cocoon nest. of some kind. OK, but yeah, you put a spike like this in the ground with a rope and then this tree collar. Did it move? No. It's hardened off. It's good to go. Oh my gosh. This is such a good tree. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. We should probably get under there with the rake though and rake back some of the debris that's been collecting. I don't even know when the last time we did that was. Years. If ever. Oh no, I did it last year. You did? I did do some last year. I remember you were kind of scared because there was like a critter that would rustle. Yeah, there was a, there's critters. <laughs> Just clearing out the base of the tree. All the debris that collects under there will start to pile up on the trunk and you don't want that. It's interesting because it's Amarica also... ex pungens. So it's yeah. blue for pungens and Serbian spruce, the Amarica. It's not like a true wheat. It's more of a, a sway. Do you think any of those branches have rooted in? I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if that's how things work for these types of trees. Look at that trunk. I just love like, it almost looks fake. So pretty. It's almost too pretty. This shrub right in front of Christopher right here is a bloomerang pink. It's a dwarf lilac. And then this Ow, here oh. is, oh, are you okay? That one's very spiky. Oh, they're spiky. And then this right here is a rolled doll rose that got transplanted. And our ellipsis sculpture from Brandon Road. Oh, alliums. <laughs> alliums are coming. Fox gloves are back there. Verbena. We're going to do some castor beans back there. Last year we had the artist blue floss flower there and that looks really pretty 
Oh, you can tell it can breathe. Yeah. Let me run to the garage and get the bigger rake, and then we can start raking all this stuff up. Good idea. So take a look. This area is as tidy as it's going to get for now. What do you think, Christopher? I think we're tidy enough for now. Only a few more things left to do. I do really like that new trellis. Yeah, I think the square looks great there. Yeah, so that's pretty much this bed for now, but we're transitioning over here to our new garden bed. This was planted in 2022. Right, so everything is a baby. Should we do a check of our buds on the sky view? Yeah, these were just planted in the fall. These, these are, are okay. Let's dance sky view. Growth at the base, buds here, buds here. We might have done it. I think we're okay. Oh, the drip is in the shrub. There we go. <laughs> this drip hasn't been perfected. We just installed this in the fall. What we're gonna... Yes, on our video called Drip Part 1. Drip Part 2 will be uh, a good video. We're gonna finish up some emitters. We're gonna put in quite a bit more uh, connecting pieces. Yeah. Look at all these daffodils poking through. So we gotta get after these foxgloves. Yes, these foxgloves over here. These are Sutton's Apricot. I planted them from seed last year. And we got a couple blooms. And everything I see about foxgloves is really just clean them up. Not, you know, there's not a, a big science to it. Clean them up. They'll flush out and cover up anything left over. This is something from last year. Oh, there's daffodils in there. Oh, yeah. My original planting of daffodils was 400 mixed yellow and white daffodils in this area. Then this past season, I planted some more. But that's it for Fox Love, by the way. Just, it's really just tidy up. Let's just continue here. I'm going to take this Midnight Masquerades. Midnight Masquerades. I'm also going to grab this. Oh my gosh, it's going to come to me. Oh, that grass. I can tell you, it's not going to come to me. Oh, I know the name of it. I know. It's, oops, it's a Calamagrostis. It is called, is it variegated? Yes, it's a variegated, but it's white. It is going to be on the screen right below here, and I'm going to be sitting and putting his video together. Very annoyed that it didn't come to me. It's a fun name too. All right, that's cut. So we got to cut back the Midnight Masquerade Pensamen. How far down do you want me to take these, Eric? I think, is it right to here? I would take them as far down as you can. It looks like they've put on some new growth already. They really have. They look like a really pretty purple lettuce. I really hope these fill in and get real lush. Yeah, they've already, I mean, they're filling in very quickly. Oh, I think this might be a reach in and grab and even better. I have to say, I love being the filmer during this part of the garden season. <gasps> Not a breath. <laughs> I love being the camera holder. Are these just a reach and pull or? No. no. <laughs> nope. This down. grass can come out. Sneak around and find him. There he is. Twilight Zone blue stem. Hellebores are starting to bloom. That's pretty. Yeah, they look great. 
We gotta get this support. This I think we use for the delphiniums, right? Yes. It's funny when you start finding gloves in, yeah. in the garden. This is coming down to the ground, I think. Yeah. Or at least to like a foot. Yeah, we'll do that soon. Yeah. This is another grass. That's fine. The lamium will just clean up. We'll rake it a little bit. Delphiniums. We already did all that. This is all good. The perennials are, yeah, everything is fine through here. Did we get these Virginia leaves that are all mucky? <laughs> the fugly. Not evergreen. So, there, yeah. That's actually, better. these don't even need to be cut, really. They're just disintegrating. Funny, it reminds me almost like a hosta leaf when they get cold and they just melt. Yeah. That will just rake up. That we gotta rake up. Rake. Rake that up. We're ending the day with the worst chore of all. But possibly the most important chore. This is, uh, I'm getting some spray ready. Right now we're trying out Bobex Deer Repellent. This is what we're trying this current Round. time of year. <laughs> I'm filling up this pump sprayer with water. Do you want to put the spray in first? Um, you're not supposed to. Oh, maybe it's flat. Because it messes up the ratio. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm doing one gallon, right? Yep, you're at a gallon and a half now. All right. And then, I know I do, whoops, seven of these. Ooh. Wear gloves. Plan on whatever I'm wearing now is going right into the washing machine after this. And plan on us getting a little further away from them the whole time. You mean they don't want to see? All right. Gross. Gross, gross, gross. Okay. The wind comes from the west, so we're going to stand here far away in the west. Yeah, but also I have to shake it. <laughs> Mix it up. Wow. Fill it with air. With this wind, make sure that's on a nice stream and not a, a spray. Because it will blow right back at you. So what I'm really focusing on are the Annabelles and any tulip foliage. And then I'm just going to go until this is done. Now, and I'm going to really, after this, up front and the hydrangea room, then I'm going to focus on the back border. This has been getting a little snacked upon, I think. Has it? I can't tell. I'm getting used to the smell. It's like minty garlic pea. <laughs> minty garlic pea. Yeah. You should be a spokesperson. I don't want to spray that. It's going to right my face. All right. <laughs> yeah, don't worry too much about the roses. They still have to be pruned. Then we'll get to spraying them. These I can actually like sear, see prints in here. Our Luca gems are coming up. Oops, I'm standing on the other side. I suggest you do too. It's gonna oh. come right at you, I think. Yep, yep, we're we're backing come, up. Come behind me. No, that's okay. I can see you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys so much for watching our day of March chores. <laughs> Are you trying to get away from me? Yeah, he stinks. So he stinks so bad right now. Oh my goodness. It was the most important part of the day was it getting was. that deer stuff down. <laughs> but again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're growing for me gardening. Thanks for growing with us. <laughs>